Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Algebra 2 trig. In this video we're going to go over how to graph trigonometric functions by identifying the amplitude, frequency, period, and horizontal and vertical phase shifts. So if you need a review on how to derive trig functions like y equals sine of x, cosine of x, or tan of x, I have a video on that I'll post in the description and up on the right here. So please check that out if you haven't done that yet. So now let's look at the different parts of a trig function. So we have this, this kind of crazy looking thing, y equals a sine of fx minus h plus v. So don't get freaked out by this, we're going to look at what each part of this means. So if we look at this a here, this actually is our amplitude. So the amplitude is just kind of like the height of the trig function. So it's the, but the real definition is the distance or absolute value between the x-axis and the highest point. So, so let's say we had a two here, then the highest point uh, would be a two on, on the y-axis and the lowest point would be a minus two. So just think of it as the height of the graph. Up next, we have this f here. This is for our frequency and our periods. So we have two things here. So the frequency is just the number of cycles that happen between zero and two pi. And we always want to know 0 and 2 pi because 2, 2 pi is 360 degrees. So that's why it's that magic number. And when we say the number of cycles, we really mean like the number of S shapes for a sine function or the number of V shapes for a cosine function. So we also find the period here in, in relation to the frequency because we use this formula 2 pi over the absolute value of frequency. And all the period is, is the length of one cycle. So the length of one V cycle for a cosine function or the length of one sine function. It's always the X value of where that first period ends. Up next, we have this horizontal phase shift. So notice, so all horizontal phase shift is when we, we take the function, the entire function, we move it along the X axis, either left or right. So notice we are subtracting, so that means Whenever we have a plus sign, so let's say we have plus pi over 2 here, that means we're going to be moving to the left. It's always going to be like the opposite of how you might think it's going to be because this is our formula and we're subtracting this. And we'll look at an example soon enough. And the last part of our function here is our vertical shift is just when we're moving the entire function up or down along the y-axis. So here's a summary of everything we just went over in case anything was hard to read. Uh, it shows all the different definitions of amplitude, frequency, period, and horizontal and vertical phase shifts. And when you're ready, we have this example here. We want to graph y equals 2 cosine of x plus pi over 2 plus 1. So there's a lot going on here, but we're going to break down what each transformation is and then do this one step at a time. So we have here, we're just going to go over what each of these means. So 2, remember, is our amplitude. So remember that is our height of the graph. So that means we're going to go all the way up to 2 on the y-axis and all the way down to negative 2 on the y-axis. And we'll see what that looks like. Next we have our frequency and period. So nothing crazy happening here, which is nice. Um, our frequency is just equal to 1. So we could have a number next to here and then that would change our frequency. Um, but in this case we just have 1, so we only have 1 v-cycle, because this is a cosine function, 1 v-cycle. Um, go between 0 and 2 pi. So just like a normal y equals cosine of x function that we'll look at. And the next we have our period, which is we find with using that formula 2 pi over the absolute value of the frequency, which is just 1. So we know that this is just 2 pi. So this is where the first cycle ends. We know that one entire cycle will happen by the, by the end of 2 pi. And over here we have a horizontal phase shift by pi over 2 by 90 degrees. So remember we said before earlier that if we're adding our horizontal phase shift, we're really going to be moving everything to the left. So we're going to move our entire function to the left by 90 degrees. And then the last part of our function here is a vertical shift up one. So we're going to take our entire function and then move it up one. So to do this kind of crazy looking to graph this kind of crazy looking formula, we're going to do this one transformation at a time. So we're going to graph each part of this separately. So the first part we're going to want to graph is just a regular plain old y equals cosine of x function. So if, again, if you haven't done, if you haven't seen how to derive this, please check that out first before going into this more complicated question. So I'm going to do this kind of fast. Oh, let me just mark this as one up here. This is minus one down here. 
So the cosine of x function always starts at 0, 1, and then it kind of makes this v-shape. And you can derive this using the calculator by plugging in these different values or by using a unit circle. And just a reminder of what's going on in this graph, these x values all represent different rating measures. So pi over 2 is 90 degrees, pi is 180, 3 pi over 2 is 270, 2 pi is 360, and then everything to the left is just the same thing but negative, so minus 90, minus 180. So now I'm just going to connect these dots and label our graph y equals cosine of x. So this is like the first part of our question. You know we're going to be using a cosine function. So for the next part of our question, now we're going to incorporate that amplitude that we had. So we had an amplitude of 2. So we kind of have this height of 2. So we're going to do the same exact thing here, but now this is going to go up to 2. So 1, 2, and then this will go down to minus 1, minus 2. So this will go all the way down to minus 2. So what's going to happen is we're kind of going to like stretch our cosine function all the way up to 2. So, so instead of 0, 1, this will now be 0, 2. And then the zero values are just going to stay the same. So pi over 2, 0 will be the same. This pi will now all the way, will go all the way down to minus 2. 0 will stay the same. This will go up to 2. Connect our dots. We have that nice V shape. And let's just do the same thing on the other side. So notice that we just kind of made this graph taller and we'll label our graph y equals 2 cosine of x. So we're not done yet, we have more transformations to do. So now we need to start doing our phase shifts. So this is like our second step, and now let's look at our third step. So for our step, you see that now we're adding our horizontal phase shift. So that, that means we're just going to take everything we did here, and now we're going to move this entire thing to the left by 90 degrees. So, so left by pi over 2, 90 degrees. So let's just look at our the graph we just did and see what that what where points might end up. So if we started here and we wanted to move this point to the left by 90 degrees, we would just end up over here. And we're just going to do this with each and every point. So this will come over here, this would come over here, and this will come over here. So let's start graphing these new points and see what this looks like. So before, so now pi, negative pi over 2 is now all the way up at 2. Pi minus pi is at 0. This is all the way down here. And then minus 2 pi is 0. So let's connect our dot. And now let's just continue the cosine function pattern on the other side. And we'll label our graph. So we have y equals 2 cosine of x plus pi over 2. So another thing to notice about this is that we transform this graph, and this kind of looks like a sine function, right? So that's that's kind of the kind of cool thing about transformations is that we can take a cosine function and tra transform it into a sine function. The v shape now looks like an s shape. So we're almost done. We have one more transformation to do. We have our vertical phase shift. We're just going to take this entire thing and move it up one. So let's put in our y axis value. So this is one, two, and now we're going to be going up to three. So now let's just look at um, some points here. So if this is so if zero is moved up one, so this point is down at zero. So if this is moved up one, it's going to be here. Minus two will now become my up minus one. And then this is going to go up to three. So we're just going to move our entire graph up by one. So if we start here, we have this is at one. Um, pi over two we have now at minus one. Pi moves up by one and becomes at one. 3 pi over 2 is at 2, but now it's going to be at 3. 2 pi is at 0, but now it's going to be at 1. And let's connect our dots on this side. And now let's just continue the pattern on this other side here. So we have 
minus pi over 2 was 2, but it's going to be 3 now. Pi over 2 from 0 to 1. Minus 3 pi over 2 is at minus 2, but now it's going to be minus 1. And then minus 2 pi goes from 0 to 1. And we'll just connect our dots and label our graph. So we have y equals 2 cosine of x plus pi over 2 plus 1. So that is our answer. So, so this is just like a way to show you each step of the transformation, but on a test or something or for homework, this is probably the final answer. This is probably what they're going to want to see. If you're looking for more questions just like these, check out the practice questions right here. The answers are up on my website, mathsocks.org, if you want to check those out. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I post free math videos every week, so I hope to see you guys around here soon. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.